This is not good. Basically, every model is printing out a severe weather outbreak on Friday and Saturday. With all hazards possible, including strong tornadoes. Now, when will this all go down? We'll have that and more in your forecast starting now. Four. Looking at our warnings map like we always start with, we have a huge swath of the central and southern plains under red flag and high wind warnings. Now those are because of that really strong low pressure that we talked about in the last video that will be the catalyst for all of our severe weather over the next couple of days. And we've also got winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings out here in the west in the mountains where they're going to get absolutely dumped on also by that same storm system that'll give us all of that severe weather. I'm talking about feet of snow out there, so skiers, you gotta be happy. Oh, I'm so happy I've got feet of snow. Yeah, well, I don't have any. Now, right now, the rest of the United States is pretty much warning free. Hey, that looks like a heart, that's cool. <laughs> That will change over the next couple of days. Now, the reason that's going to change is because a massive storm system is going to impact the United States from Thursday into the weekend. Let's take a look at how that will evolve at the high level, the 500 millibar level. It's always good to look at this, guys, because it gives you a really good idea about what will take place, the pattern and everything that's gonna happen. Let's first start with today, Wednesday. You'll notice a shortwave down here in Texas. That will be the catalyst of some strong storms today into tonight, possibly some large hail. Be an isolated wind gust here or there. I don't think tornadoes are the main threat with that. And that short wave is why we have this slight risk out here for southeastern Oklahoma and northeastern Texas, mainly for large hail. Zooming a little further, that includes the cities of Dallas, Texarkana, Longview in Texas, and then McAllister and Hugo here in southeastern Oklahoma. And then once again, the main threat will be hail. We've got this area of 10% hatched, so some large hail could fall if any storms do form. Although the tornado threat is non-zero, it's very low compared to the next couple of days, only being 2%. Now, if you look at the NAM here, granted guys, this is the NAM, so we need to take this with a grain of salt. The NAM doesn't really have any storms developing tonight, so that'll be something we'll need to watch, but there is gonna be a cap in place for the environment across that part of the country in Oklahoma and Texas. So there is a decent chance storms don't even form. But that is merely the beginning. Cue dramatic music. Now this shortwave is absolutely peanuts compared to what we got coming. Check it out on Thursday. We've got this massive trough moving in on the West Coast. That'll be your catalyst for your mountain snow during the day on Thursday where they'll get beat in the Sierra Nevadas. Check it out as we go through the day on Thursday. That trough moves across the mountains, moves into Texas, and absolutely bombs out and ejects into the plains. Really strong jet streak here. That'll be your catalyst for a lot of those storms that will have on Friday. That is severe weather outbreak number one. That will come during the day Friday into the night on Friday night where we could have a strong line of storms that develops. This is an absolute bomb cyclone that forms here. We could have pressures in the 980s, even in the 970s for this surface low, which is crazy. After that trough ejects, it'll quickly slide to the northeast, but watch it. There's another trough that forms behind it, an even bigger and broader one with the jet stream taking a big dip here and really strengthening. And that is a very concerning sign for severe weather generally in this region and that's where we have our enhanced risk on Saturday. That's severe weather outbreak number two. And going into the overnight hours on Sunday, we could even have some strong storms here in the Northeast as that trough once again continues sliding to the East. We'll have storms generally in that region. All right, so what we're gonna do now, let's take a look at the high level day by day pattern. And then we're gonna take a look at each severe weather outbreak in a little bit further detail to see are the conditions present for a massive outbreak. Stop what you're doing right now. Pick up your mouse and your hand just like this. Throw it in the air, grab it again, hit the subscribe button, and mash the like button. And leave a comment below. Look, someone's leaving a comment. This video is so cool. Wow. Back to you, Stormcat. So like we said, during the day on Wednesday, we could have some shower and storms here, down here in Arkansas and Southern Oklahoma and Texas. That's that signal there. Once again, though, large hail is the main concern. But check it out. Here's our storm system. This is overnight Wednesday night. Look at all that mountain snow and rain pushing off the West Coast. Check it out as we go into Thursday, 
during the day. That disturbance slides to the east, gives some mountain snow here to Colorado, potentially Utah as well. But then watch as our low moves right off the Rocky Mountains. It bombs out here to pressure about 978 millibars. That's a very strong low. We're talking about pressures equivalent to a hurricane. Now, I will say a couple of days ago, it was looking like that we could have pressures in the 960s with this low. I don't think that's going to be the case. The low has actually trended a little bit weaker the past couple of days. But going into Friday, this is where our severe weather outbreak number one and all of this moisture here, that's all associated to a very strong line of storms that will develop with all severe hazards possible. Now, overnight Saturday, we will likely have a strong line of storms that will continue to push and slam its way off to the east. So we could be looking at an overnight wind threat here, generally in this region in Illinois, Indiana, or Western Tennessee, maybe down into Mississippi. Going into the day on Saturday, this low up here is gonna slide, continue sliding off to the northeast. Now, one thing you'll know, look at the backside of that. We'll have possibly blizzard conditions up here in Minnesota and the Dakotas for several inches of snow could fall with some very strong winds wrapping around behind it. We likely will have blizzard warnings for at least some and severe weather for many. Now, the really interesting thing is actually during the day on Saturday, a secondary system develops down here. Check out that low. That low is 991 millivars. That develops during the day on Saturday and that will be our focal point for severe weather outbreak number two. All that green here, that shower and storm activity, how widespread and how early in the day that is will directly affect our potential for severe storms. If we have a lot of rain early in the day like the Euro depicts here, that could actually lower the ceiling for our severe weather event in general. So we'll have to watch that very carefully. But nonetheless, the Euro is picking up on this severe weather outbreak from Ohio all the way down to Mississippi and Alabama and Georgia. Then overnight Saturday, that line continues pushing off to the east. You'll notice here Sunday, We've got some rain here in the, off the East Coast. That could be a focal point for some more severe storms on Sunday. I don't think we're talking about the same types of threats as we are Saturday and Friday, but still with how potent of a system this is, I wouldn't rule anything out at this point. Let's take a deeper dive into Friday, the severe weather we're expecting and what the conditions are gonna be like. And then we'll look at Saturday. All right, so here's our severe weather outlook for Friday, March 14th. And we've got this big area of slight risk that basically covers all the way from Minnesota, all the way down to Mississippi. Mississippi in Louisiana with a very big enhanced risk that goes from Mississippi into Illinois. Here's at least what the NAM has it looking like. The NAM has a line, a very strong line of storms. Watch this. It pops out of nowhere right there by about Friday afternoon into Friday evening. This is about Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. It has this very strong line of storms developing. You know, here's our center of the low. So we've got these really strong winds wrapping around this way that's driving that line of storms that will continue driving its way to the north and East, check it out by 8 p.m. We've got a strong line of storms that could be packing winds of 60 to 70, maybe even 80 miles an hour. I think the further north you go on Friday, probably the greater the wind threat, but the less the tornado threat. Now, the NAM only goes out to Friday here at 8 p.m., so I would expect more storms to develop here down in Louisiana and Arkansas, but we aren't that far yet on the guidance, and it'll, they'll probably form right along this axis, right along this cold front that'll be there, and this low will be absolutely cranking up winds and those winds will be our initiator for storms just like we saw in that image above. One thing to note with Friday, is the northern mode of storms that we're gonna have. That will be more of like a line, right? Like a QLCS, that'll be a strong wind threat. We'll have some tornado threat and some hail threat, but wind will be the primary concern. The southern mode of storms down here in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Arkansas, that will be our more discrete mode. That's where we could have some more discrete supercells that could produce some tornadoes. I think there will also be a line too that'll form right along this cold front as these winds drive off to the east. But I think our greater tornado threat will be down here to the south on Friday. And looking at our Cape values for Friday, we'll have a good amount of energy there. We'll have actually some pretty high Cape values up here to the north, surprisingly. So we'll have some very strong storms up there, plenty of fuel for that. And then also down here to the south, we'll have Cape at about a thousand, which is pretty good for storms. You'd like to see a little bit more, but when you have strong forcing like this, it might not actually matter. The one question mark with Friday was going to be the moisture. The GFS and Euro have been going back and forth on whether they think there was gonna be enough, but this is the Euro and it does have a very good 
good plume of moisture. We're looking for those teal colors that signal dew points of greater than 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's this area right here. So we will have enough moisture in place, especially for the Southern mode. For the Northern mode, I don't think it's actually gonna matter because the forcing will be so great with the winds and the jet streak. Even though we only have dew points in the 40s and 50s, we'll still get some very potent storms. Now let's look at Saturday, which could be the bigger day actually. We've got this massive area of slight risk. This is day four, 15% issued. That goes from Ohio all the way down to Louisiana and the Gulf of America. And check it out here. We've got a, also a very big area of an enhanced risk down here. And that's a 30% risk. And that's centered around Alabama and Georgia and Mississippi. And guys, the signs I'm seeing are very concerning. They're concerning. I'm concerned. I'm very very concerned for Saturday. And the reason being when the models are printing stuff like this out, guys, this is one of the strongest outlooks I've ever seen on this model. This is the Colorado State model in the purple here. That's like a really bad 60 to 100% chance of getting insane severe weather. That is not good. The red here is about a 30% chance of getting very strong severe weather. This is not Good. So please take this setup very seriously. All right, so let's take a look at the sounding. This is from the GFS. This is somewhere in the warm sector down in Alabama on Saturday. And the first thing I want you to look at is the cape over here on the left side of the screen. All of that in here, that means there's basically no cap on the environment and the cape is off the chart. So the storms have plenty of fuel. So check. The next thing you'll notice down here is the shear. We've got some very strong shear here, 30 to 50, even greater the higher you go up in the atmosphere. So wind shear is there, check. Also notice how the winds turn with height here. That's called the winds are backed. And that just means as the air rises, it'll tend to turn and rotate. That's not good. We've also got our hodograph over here. And what you generally look for for tornadoes is you look for this general U shape, which that also a bad sign for tornadoes. And all of that funnels into this possible hazard type. That's a PDS tornado signal. So what this is saying the conditions that are in place in this environment indicate an environment conductive to strong violent tornadoes that is not good i'm concerned have i said that enough now, on top of all that we've got our significant tornado parameter which is printing out absolutely insane values in the medium term. This is for Saturday. And I think these parameters will also slide off to the east during the day on Saturday. All signs are pointing to a tornadic outbreak on Saturday. Saturday could be a very bad day. If you do have friends or family that live down here in Mississippi, Alabama, or Georgia, please tell them to stay weather aware on Saturday. Cause I don't, I don't want to make any comparisons with any past events. But this could be a day we look back on for a long time. Now keep in mind though, guys, Saturday isn't necessarily a complete slam dunk. Notice on the NAM here how there is some morning convection that takes place. There is some morning shower and storms. That could disrupt our severe weather event on Saturday. So when you wake up on Saturday, if you see a bunch of shower and storms here in this part of the country, that could dampen the severe weather threat some while not completely eliminating it. It could limit the ceiling. So that's something we need to watch for very carefully. That is one of our fail modes that we say maybe it won't happen or maybe it'll bust. So I'll have to watch that very carefully over the next couple of days. But check it out though. Even the NAM, even with that morning convection, it still prints out some very strong storms that form along that cold front, which is a problem. And lastly, guys, finishing up with the severe weather threat, the East Coast could get in on the action here as we've got this day five, 15% risk, mainly of a squall line with some strong winds, maybe an isolated tornado or two, maybe some isolated hail as well. But I think by far, Saturday is the biggest threat of all three of the days, Friday being a close second. Now guys, two other things to note, on top of the severe weather, we are also going to have widespread close to hurricane force winds for a massive part of the country. And if we take a look at those winds on Friday, we'll have gusts of 40 to 50, even 60, possibly 70 miles an hour in Texas and New Mexico. And those winds will move north and east with the low pressure as it bombs out over the Midwest. So by the time we get to Saturday, we'll have incredibly gusty winds here from the Dakotas all the way through Ohio and Michigan. And that's why most likely we'll have blizzard warnings issued for the Dakotas and possibly Minnesota as these winds ramp up. Now with those incredibly strong winds that we'll have, we'll also have a big fire danger, especially in Texas and New Mexico. This is the fire danger of today. We actually have a critical risk down near Fort Stockton in Midland, Texas. Now this is our fire risk for Thursday. And although I don't see a critical risk that extends from South Dakota all the way down to the Mexico border in Texas. And if we take a look 
look at this. This is day three through six. We've got fire weather risks every single day from Texas all the way up to Nebraska. The low relative humidity combined with those very strong winds could make for some dangerous fire conditions. So please, if you do live in those areas, it's not a great time to have a campfire. All right, guys, well, that about does it for us here. I just want to remind you guys before I go, Thursday, we've got max velocity on the podcast. We're going to be streaming live here on YouTube. So make sure you go to that and watch that. Friday, I may be live as well. Saturday, I will most definitely be live. So check for that all here on YouTube. Thanks for joining me, guys. Send everyone you know this forecast video to let them know that the severe weather is coming. And if you do have friends and family from Ohio all the way down to the deep south, let them know to stay weather aware Friday into Saturday where a possible severe weather outbreak would happen. And as always, find someone, tell them you love them, tell them you care about them, give them a hug, do something nice for someone today. This is Stormcat 5 and I'll see you on the next one.